Good day and welcome to Canadian Freedom, right? Today on this week's edition of Irritating Liberals, uh, we're going to start with uh, Karina Gold, uh, Gould, the uh, Parliamentary Secretary for the House. Um, she comes out with her little her little uh, rip on Pierre Polyev just to basically distract for how bad of a job they've been doing for eight years. They don't want to talk about uh, the state of things in Canada right now. All they can do is what uh, Max Villaquette, the guy who was hired over the last few weeks for Trudeau's new as Trudeau's new PR and image consultant, um, because obviously they're getting hammered in the polls. They needed to do something, so they bring this guy in, and he basically says, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare Pierre Trudeau or Pierre Poliev to Donald Trump, and uh, Canadians will come back to voting for you. So here she is talking about Pierre. Um her her arrogance. I, I, we should just change her name to Karen. She's like the teacher uh, in grade school or high school that everybody dreads to have next year. Uh, oh, she, you know she's her voice isn't as bad as Christina Freeland's at least. Let me be clear. It's not that bad, but it's pretty apparent how. Uh, she thinks she's like the teacher and Canadians are her class misbehaving, basically. That's the way, and, and Pierre and the Conservatives are part of that class. Um, you know, she's a typical liberal, uh, I'm elite, uh, I know best. Um, well, tell me what you think in the comments below. Let's have a listen. Hey, everyone. Um... So I'm out here to tell you that I am not going to indulge yet another one of Mr. Polyev's temper tantrums. Today we were supposed to be debating uh, Bill C-50, an act on sustainable jobs. It's the same bill that the Conservatives tried to move 20,000 uh, amendments to last week at committee. They failed to do that. and so. They keep using this word filibuster, like to slow things down. Um, conservative, Pierre, Pierre Polyev, conservatives, Canadians, not just conservative Canadians, but across the board, have seen how bad it's gotten. And when the other parties suggest, let's put a pause on this carbon uh, tax for some a little bit of relief through the holidays, they're not having it. They're, they're, they don't listen. They don't care about Canadians because if they did, they'd put a pause for everybody, not just in Eastern Canada where support for their uh, liberal seats was dropping like a stone. That's why they're holding up Parliament. We're tired of this. We, uh, we're not going to stand for you pushing through all these ridiculous bills anymore and not giving a crap about Canadians and the cost of living. We were, supposed, we were to supposed to be debating this. This is a bill that talks about Canada's future. It's about making sure that we have a strong economy for the future. Canada right now is ranked... Strong, strong economy. We're, we're, we are in a recession right now. They'll throw that whole uh, G, growth GDP. Uh, when you're bringing a, a million people in, a debt to GDP ratio obviously uh, looks low. Um, but we are in negative growth, and I guarantee you, first quarter 2024 will be negative growth. Sorry for my dog, he's going crazy on the couch here with his new toy. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. Third in the world for foreign direct investment, and it's because that we understand that we have to fight climate change, protect the environment, and... <laughs> fight climate change. Now, we've had the carbon tax for, what, three years pretty much now? Have they met their targets? No. They've actually dropped to, what, 64th out of 67 countries? 
climate emissions around the world are still rising. And when we, that's another subject, uh, emissions, CO2 is a, a natural thing anyway, but we won't get into that. So their tax that was supposed to lower emissions and um, make air better and all this stuff uh, under their green policy, carbon tax, they haven't come close to their targets. So that's failed. And everybody's paying extra for everything. So just own up. Scrap it. Let's try something else. But no, they won't do that. Trudeau would never do that. He Again, he does not care about Canadians, uh, the middle class. He wants everyone to be poor, broke. Because, you know, if we were all at the lowest income, we'd all be on social programs and... Uh, would have to stay on uh, the socialist uh, plan under Trudeau. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Look, let's continue to listen to uh, Miss Karen Gould here. Order, to, Order build to build that economy. And quite frankly, the world is moving in that direction. But last night, Mr. Polyev and his Conservative members of Parliament put 198 amendments to an 11-page bill on the order paper. That would trigger another night of marathon voting. And why? Because he is ideologically opposed to fighting climate change. Here she goes. She's got to start doing the, he's American right wing, uh, mega conservative in Canada. He is hellbent on bringing American style, extreme right wing politics that have created chaos and dysfunction in Washington to Canada. And so instead of entertaining his little temper tantrum, I'm going to suggest that he takes a little bit of a time out. We're just about to move See, into the there's holidays. Her little teacher. And I think it's a good idea Take for Mr. Polya and his conservative members of parliament to go home, cool down a bit, take a break, talk, to Canadians, real Canadians, and reflect on... Real Canadians. So what she's implying there is that the people that support um, Pierre and the Conservative Party were not real Canadians. From her mouth. What do you think of that? I'm pretty real Canadian. There's lots of real Canadians. You want to talk about real Canadians in American style politics. I'm pretty sure you guys brought Hillary Clinton to your liberal convention, no? Anyways, let's see how much more I can handle of her. Um, I, won't even, um, I won't even say childish because I don't want to insult Canadian children because quite frankly they behave better than most conservative No, adults. just conservative adults and people that agree with him, you're gonna, but not the children. MPs, but to reflect on their politics of obstruction and their irresponsible actions. Of it's not obstruction. That's how parliamentary systems work. You guys have done the same in the past. Hell, you just did it with uh, Bill C two three four with your senators. This session. This session. I find it particularly troubling how much trouble Mr. Polyev has with the truth, with the facts. With, with, and with the tr uh, what, what, what am I supposed to say again? What's my talking points they told me to say? Max, Max, where are you? What am I supposed to say again? Telling the truth to Canadians. In this parliamentary session, the Conservatives have obstructed over a third of days of debate of government business. I swear they, the Liberals all went to a, a convention about speaking because they all do this where they hold their hands and they talk like this. Like every single one of them puts their thumb on top when they're talking. Just watch. Watch anything in House of Commons. They think uh, this looks like they're important, uh, that they're that they're very uh, parliamentary and states-like if they talk by using their hand like this. That's obstructing legislation that would make houses more affordable, build more rental units, 
that would bring more competition to the grocery sector, that would um, create a free trade agreement with Ukraine. It's obstruction that would... Um, she has no idea what she's talking about. Anyway, I can't stand her anymore. Friggin' Karen. Karen Gould, hurry up and have your baby so I don't have to listen to you anymore. My God. Just awful. And up next, we have... Uh, what's his name? Peter Kovorden, I think his name is. Anyways, uh, he, <laughs> he thinks he's so clever. He come, He randomly stands up and he has these little fiery speeches with his fruity ties and... Uh, thinks he's so tough, but he, he he's terrible. I don't know what it is with the, the people and uh, the MPs and his caucus and uh, his backbench, but they're all, like, the most irritating people in uh, in Canada. I think it was funny. I think it was uh, Clyde, uh, uh, his channel, he was talking about, I couldn't stop laughing the one day, how he was saying all these people are like the... Uh, uh, the high school hall monitors. <laughs> Where's your hall pass? <laughs> Which I, this is him right there. Look at his face. Where's your hall pass? I could see it for sure. Anyway, he, he thinks he scored a big win here on uh, calling Pierre the Grinch by accident. Here, have a listen. Speaker, the Conservatives are always trying to cancel climate action, but last week the Grinch, I mean, the leader of the Conservative Party, tried to cancel... <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. That's so clever. <laughs> Christmas as well. But instead, he canceled. Conservatives are always trying to cancel climate action. But last week, the leader of the Conservatives tried to cancel Christmas too. But instead, he just canceled his credibility. Mr. Speaker, last week, the con <laughs> He tried to cancel for you guys. Hold you guys up and do some work and actually uh, negotiate or uh, debate something that Canadians want in... Uh, um, some relief on the carbon tax. <laughs> oh man, they're so entitled. Conservatives voted against the GST taking off of, uh, of psychotherapy and counseling. He doesn't even know. He has to check his notes every time. Conservatives voted against seniors getting their teeth fixed. When will he admit that his reckless plan is putting Canadians at risk? Canadians at risk. <laughs> yes, let's take a look where we are after eight years. Two million people, food bank, one in nine skipping meals, everything way more expensive, homelessness, uh, explosion, young people not going to even think about owning their own home in the near future, but yeah, risk, we, we, they're putting people at risk, God, I can't stand these liberals. You know, he's funny, He he he's quick to judge, I remember that story. Hold on. Let me pull that up. Uh, yes. Now I remember. Oh, I got his first name wrong. MP Adam, not Peter. I uh, apologize for dropping F-bomb on Canadian questioning vaccine mandates <laughs> from the CBC, no less. Pretty bad when they're uh, ripping the CBC, but this is because uh, I'm sure the article talks about... Uh, how this um, Ontario-born teacher living in New Zealand is wrong about vaccine mandates, but uh, <sighs> cursing at Canadian living abroad who called former Olympic a disgrace of a Canadian because she disagreed with your vaccine mandates. And he had to say, last week I let my emotions get the better of me. Yeah. Anyways... Liberals for this week. <laughs> like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching. Help the little guy. And watch anything else I have to offer. Come back. Check out my other uh, videos. At Canadian Freedom. Right? Are we still free? <laughs> Thanks.